I'm Logan Crawford, and right now on Spotlight, we're exploring the remarkable healing power of dolphins with Olivia de Bergerac, PhD. She has penned a powerful book. It is called Dolphins, Doctors of Our Soul, Dolphin Within. In the book, the doctor shares her personal and professional journey, studying the profound effects wild dolphins have on the human mind, body, and spirit. Her research uncovers scientific evidence that dolphin encounters can help heal fears, grief, depression, and even lead to personal transformation. We're delighted to have this very talented author join us here today on Spotlight. We thank the team at Prime 7 Media for helping us put her in the spotlight today. We ask viewers like you to support authors like her by subscribing to our channel and by purchasing her amazing book. The link's are below this interview. Doctor, great to see you on our show today. Thank you for joining me. Thank you for inviting me, Lachlan. It is my pleasure. You started your day at 5 a.m. today. I'm so at, uh, admiring you for having that discipline right now. Um, it sounded like such a beautiful way to start the day, kayaking, swimming. Did you encounter any dolphins today when you were out and about? Not today, but I got an email from my friend who is in L.A., Camille. She's a famous singer, French singer, and she said she swam with dolphins. Wow. That's wonderful. <laughs> That's wonderful. The experience of swimming with dolphins is quite unique, uh, particularly wild dolphins, not in like some kind of training pool at SeaWorld or something, but to be out in the ocean swimming with dolphins – it's described to us what that experience is like. So for most people, uh, they go into a state of bliss and they feel loved because the dolphin look at you in their eyes. With their eyes, they look at you and there is a very strong experiences. So for example, the people who were drug addicted told me it's better than cocaine. The people who are um, the people who are they might have a kind of they burst in tears and they tell me I just realized that I've been sexually abused by my stepdad. So there is a big transformation, and for me, I've seen over twenty five years and more lots of transformation so I wanted to scientifically understand what why and the other thing I see people who tell me I can't swim with dog I can't swim I'm scared I'm scared of sharks mm. but when they see the dolphin they jump in the first one so I was amazed by this state and I then did the research so what I did is I monitor the brain wave of the humans and what you realize is that when humans see the dolphins and swim with them the brain waves slow down and they go in a very very slow brain wave it's like monk buddhist monk who have you know meditated for 20 years to get there and in that state, human have no fear, no physical pain. So we could live on this planet like that with no fear, no physical pain. And they, they transform because it's like they, they are linked with their real soul. They can see who they are really beyond the pain, beyond the trauma, beyond everything. Amazing. Amazing. So it's kind of like our biorhythms sync when we're with the dolphins, that the state of exactly. peace and harmony that they exactly. have. Amazing. Exactly. It's like we go in, it's called entrainment. We go in sync with them. Mm. And the key, you know, I study the brain, but the key is the heart. The dolphins live in their heart. We they used to be on land, they went to the sea, and when you are in the sea, you float and you don't have gravity. We suffer from gravity and we have emotion and we have pain, but they float and they are in their heart. And when you are in your heart, 
you access your third brain, which is the neocortex, the amazing brain with intuition, with inspiration, with problem solving. So you are in the third brain. And what they have learned is to collaborate, is to care for each other, to care for the environment. They don't destroy the environment. We as humans, <laughs> we are very primitive. We have our reptilian brain, which is always in fight, flight, freeze. You know, it's a good brain to survive, but we are still in that little brain. We have our emotional brain, which is a mammalian brain. And as soon as we have fear, as soon as we have anger, we go into the fight or flight. So we are very primitive. They are in the third brain. They are in their heart and they know how to care for each other. We are fighting with each other, you know, after so many years, millions of years, we are still fighting, and we are the only species destroying our own environment. There is no other animal destroying. <laughs> so for me, with them, when you look at them, when you live with them, you realize they are showing us the way. They are showing us the way where we can develop our own brain. Let me ask you this. Um, it's hard for people to swim with dolphins on a regular basis. Have you thought about how we can get these effects of, you know, being simpatico with dolphins in our everyday lives? I do have a plan <laughs> and you might be helping me. <laughs> My big dream is to create a f not a fiction film, but a biopic, you know, a film, a beautiful film. So people, I don't know if you know The Big Blue, but it was a French film who talk about dolphins, a, a famous diver. Anyway, that had a big impact. If we could create a film which has a beautiful impact on people, I can guarantee you that people in the audience, we have the same effect because we could create the visual and the sound. My research showed that it's the sound of the dolphins, which is very important because the sound you hear when you swim with them is the same sound you heard when you were in your mother. The same Amazing. sound. So, when you are swimming with them, you are in fact like a rebirth, you know, it's rebirth. You are, you are. You're almost in you that are, embryonic stage again, where you're hearing your mother's heartbeat, that you're in water, that you're calm, you're relaxed, you're warm, you're comforted. I mean, it really is a beautiful uh, metaphor and a really beautiful um experience. And I do like your idea of creating an immersive film, perhaps a 360 degree type film, where you hear the sounds of the water, you hear the sounds of the dolphins, and you could just, you know, get the benefits of transcendental meditation without having to be a yogi and having studied for, you know, decades and decades to achieve that, that, uh, that peace and harmony, right? That's right. That's right. And it could be also fiction film in the sense that it could reach a lot of people in terms of the stories of the people who have been through different experiences, you know? Exactly. The kids, and, uh, the kids with autism, the kids with epilepsy, lots of different stories. Exactly. Tell us why you refer to dolphins as the doctors of our soul. Because they are, in a way, when you are with them, when you swim with them, you connect with your soul mm -hmm. beyond all the trauma, beyond all the pain you may have received in your life. So they're showing us the way to access that connection with the soul, the real you, the high, higher self. I understand. Was it your brother who introduced you to the beauty of the dolphins? Tell us a little bit about how you got started on this uh, dolphin journey. So I had the privilege to have two big brothers who were 
passionate about the the sea. We we were born in the south of France, which is on the French Riviera near Cannes. And um, I also had the privilege when I was young to have a problem with my heart. I had, um, when I was 13, I had a open heart surgery. But my brothers took me to the dolphins before the surgery. And when I had the open heart surgery, first of all, I was not scared to die. I told my mom the night before, if I die tomorrow, it's okay. She was crying. But I said, you know, I'm fine. If I had to go, I'm ready. But I didn't die. But uh, (laughs) my surgeon told me, your heart was so relaxed that it was easy to operate. And one week after I was back to school and nobody knew I had an open heart surgery, you know that. And that's my my research, you know. My brother also showed me how you can manifest your dream. Because when I was three, we all went to Monaco, which is, uh, you know, in the south of France. And Cousteau vessel was there, Calypso. It's a beautiful vessel, a big boat. And my brother was 13 and he touched the boat and he said, one day I would be on board. And at 22, he was a Cousteau diver. So I learned very young, very young, I learned that if you have a dream, a very clear dream, you can manifest it. You know, that was very important. That's a great lesson. Yeah. But I was, I was, you know, I love study. So I went to Paris. I I did a PhD. I went to America one year. I went to London. And then finally, (laughs) I went to see my brothers who were on Easter Island. They have a Cousteau diving center. And when I went there, I was so civilized. I was so (laughs) hopeless. I went diving. I ran out of air. I went on a horse and I lost a horse. It was a disaster. And I realized I had lost my values. I was away from the sea. I was, so I took the decision to come to Sydney because Sydney is amazing. You know, I'm in the city and I have the sea all around. So that was a big decision. And it's in Sydney where I did an MBA that the dolphin came to swim with me. And then it changed my life. Amazing. Because I realized I had studied everything, but nothing was so powerful than the dolphins. Amazing. It is such a powerful force. The sea alone and the desire to live near the sea, I think, is ingrained in most people. If you look at most you know, uh, population patterns, everybody's crowded around the sea and you've got an even more special connection because you really connect with dolphins. And that was a beautiful story about the heart surgery and how it calmed your heart before that surgery. And I'm sure that was critical to your speedy recovery. Before we leave you today, just wanted to ask you, aside from your work with dolphins, tell us a little bit about your writing journey and uh, what's up next for you. What do you have planned? Okay, so I love writing. So I share a lot of my story. For example, in this book, I talk about um, I talk about uh, a business person because I, I'm also working with business people. I take them to swimming with dolphins to relax them. So he was close to he wanted to kill himself. In short, and so he swam with a dolphin, and you know he had a a transformation and is happy and all that. I also have um, a book more about the odyssey of a soul, you know, how we can access information, access information from the past. And and then I also have a book on uh, soul manifestation, soulmates, because I found a lot of people are quite alone, but it's possible again to to connect with your soulmate which is different from painful relationship. So I I talk about that. And my, uh, as I said, my uh, focus now is to create that film. I have, I've done a lot of documentaries, but I want to create that huge film 
to to share the knowledge with more people. Well, we're looking forward to that. I think it'd be a wonderful film. I think it would be entertaining. I think it would be therapeutic. And I think it would have wonderful health benefits for the individuals and for society as well. If we all breathed a little easier, if our hearts were just a little bit more relaxed, if we lived more like the dolphins, this would be exactly. a beautiful world or an even more beautiful world. That's for mm -hmm. sure. The name of the book we've been focusing on today is called Dolphins. Doctors of Our Soul, Dolphin Within. It is an amazing book. In it, the doctor shares her personal and professional journey studying the profound effects wild dolphins have on the human mind, body, and spirit. Dr. de Bergerac, thank you so much for joining us here today on Spotlight. Thank you very much. Thank you. I, I appreciate your time, your insight, your wisdom. And to the folks at home, I'm Logan Crawford, thanking you for your time this time. Until next time on Spotlight.